Hey, welcome to Crafty Music Tips. My name is Crafty, and in this video, I'm going to talk about what you need to do in order to format your lyrics like a pro. What do you mean, format song lyrics? You can just Google them. Wrong! Uh, yeah. Look, this is why formatting song lyrics is really important for you. A well-organized song lyric sheet that you can read really clearly is just going to make your life so much easier. It's just like a video clip where the visuals need to be connected with the audio that you're hearing. There's nothing different with a lyric sheet. There's really nothing worse than being at a rehearsal or even worse at a gig where you're singing and you just got no idea. Is this too fast? Am I coming in at the right point? So I'm glad that you've decided to watch this formatting song lyric help video because I guess what we're gonna go through is just ways of not making it confusing. So how do we do that? Well, the number one thing you wanna do is you just wanna make it easy to read. Now there's two main ways to do this. You gotta have large enough words that you can read on a potentially darkly lit stage. And the other is having your song sections separate. You gotta keep them separated. Now, just a side note, you don't necessarily have to have it computer formatted. You could have it where you've just handwritten it. And scientists have done studies on the brain and the memory where they've actually come to the conclusion that if you write stuff down, then it's better for your long-term memory to remember it because you've been physically creating those letters and those words. So if you have the time, write it out. But if you don't, just a quick attention to detail with how the fonts are presented is gonna make your song lyrics easy to read and better to sing. Now I've got a bunch of special tips to show you how to make your song lyrics really formatted clearly. But before I do, I'll just quickly tell you a quick background on me and how I began my song lyric formatting. Now the year was 2006. Something like that, David Copperfield. If you're going back that far, we need popcorn or something. And it was the first time that I was ever in charge of my own jam night. It's kind of like an open mic session, but where there was a full band set up. And if you were around in that year, you'd remember that all phones didn't really have internet capabilities yet. They, they kind of did, but not like what we do now. So I lost count the amount of times that as a facilitator for a jam night, trying to get a bunch of people up to have a sing, the common excuse was always, look, I'd love to get up and sing, but I just don't know the words. Now I got sick of hearing that excuse, so I decided I'm gonna spend a bunch of time preparing a few folders just full of lyrics that are classic songs that they would probably know and probably wanna sing. So if you have a look here, you can see that I've got a bunch that I prepared. There's a lot of time getting all this together, but it was great because if anybody had that excuse and they said a song that I had the lyrics for, I'd be like, well, hey, I've got the lyrics. Get up and have a sing. Now, fast forward to these days, of course we have the internet on our smartphones. Just, you know, it's so much easier to access. But here's a bit of a problem. If I type into Google a song title, Steal My Kisses by Ben Harper will do. It comes up and, and as you can see, it looks kind of clear, but there is some information that's missing. So firstly, you gotta click on the show more. Now, for whatever reason, if you're in a super hurry where you need these lyrics now, well, that's gonna be better than nothing. But if you do have some time to invest to make these lyrics look even more clearer, well then your performance will always be foolproof. Now the first tip that's gonna be really helpful is just making sure that the lyrics are correct. It's pretty easy to find misheard or just plain incorrect lyrics out there on the internet. So just give the song a listen once through reading the lyrics and just make sure that they're correct. Now, just while we're on the correct lyrics point here, I've just been looking at these Still My Kisses lyrics a bit closer. And so here, this line here is correct. Now I've been hanging around you for days. That's how it sounds. Now I've been hanging around you for days. Whereas on another site, I actually have said, now I've been hanging around you for days. Yeah, now I know that the word round versus around, it's not that different. You could, you could have such a more significant difference, right? But here's what can go wrong. Now I've been hanging around you for days. I don't know about you, that, that's, it, I know that it sounds okay, but if you just want that rhythm of I've been hanging mm, you for days, then having an extra syllable in means that it's harder to, to squeeze in all the words at the correct amount of time. So just having a listen once through is gonna make sure that you've got all of the words and abbreviations correct. 
Now, I've just opened up my old lyric sheet file. This is how I formatted it. Let's have a look. Now, here's a really important thing, the song title. You now, many times I've seen people just print off the lyrics and they don't have the title, and then they get them all bunched up, and then they have to spend a few seconds to try to figure out, hang on, what's this song? Just put a title at the top. Now, if it's your own original song, if those lyrics go elsewhere, well then, maybe someone might read it, maybe someone will really like it, and if they don't know how to contact you to say, hey, I really like this, well then, there's a missed opportunity. And chuck in a quick way of contacting you on there. Now, we've all seen some lyric sheets look like this. Yuck, why would you do that? So yes, definitely having the spaces in between the sections, so important. Now here's one thing that I like to do, I like to make sure that the chorus is really easily identifiable. Now this is a pretty easy chorus in this song, it's just the same line over and over, so what I would do is I would grab this word and then instead of having all of the other choruses, I'd do this. I would have it in brackets so you can tell, okay so just do another chorus. Maybe put the word repeat chorus. Now there's a problem here because there's actually two choruses after. So I would I'll do this. Now, but just to be clear, these two choruses don't sound exactly the same. The first one's kind of like a breakdown. So I could say voices only or the word breakdown, something like that. Like, you know, whatever. Now, just on the subject of song structures, it's really important if there's a solo or like a big long break where the singer has to wait to sing, it's pretty important that you chuck that in. Now, if you know how many bars of a break there is, that you can write that in there just to be really clear. But just knowing that there is an extra section where you're not singing means that you're not singing right over a guitar soloist. Or maybe it's a drum break and you've started singing too soon and everyone's thinking like, why have you started singing? It's the drum break. Break! Now, I personally like putting in all of the song structure elements. It means that I know if there's an intro, uh, what the the blank lyrics are, like if it's a verse, etc. But you might think that that's getting a little bit too crazy, and that's okay, as long as you just really know where the choruses are and if there's any breaks. Now, another thing that you can do is you can put a little indent so that you can move all of the starts of the lines to be its own section. Okay, now something else that's important to pay attention to is how many words or how many sentences do you have per line? As you can see in the Google lyrics, it's I put into Nashville, Tennessee, that's one line. And then, but you wouldn't even come around to see me. Whereas in these other lyrics from a-to-zlyrics.com, you've got, I put into Nashville, Tennessee, but you wouldn't even come around to see me. This kind of seems like a bit of a mouthful. So what did I do in my original lyrical formatting? Yeah, it makes more sense to me. I put into Nashville, Tennessee, is one line. But you wouldn't even come around to see me, is another line and so forth. Yeah, so the A to Z lyrics would look like this. As you can see, it's not as clear to see where does the next line start. Now, another thing that I find that really helps me is making sure that the commas are in the correct spot rhythmically with how it's sung. This is a time to completely forget grammar because if you have a look at this first line, I put into Nashville, Tennessee. But the way that he sings it is, I put into Nashville, Tennessee. There's no pause there. For me, seeing a comma on a lyric sheet means that you kind of pause and wait for a little bit. So I like to go through and make sure that if there is a pause, even if it doesn't look right grammatically, that what that tells me is that's the rhythm of which I'll be singing. So this fourth line of the first verse is a really good example because he goes, you know I'm going to be right there behind you. So I would actually put a little comma there potentially. So without the comma just the way it is, it kind of looks like that it could be, you know I'm gonna be right there behind you. But chucking in a comma gives you that little pause. You know I'm gonna be right there behind you. Now another thing that really helps me out rhythmically is making sure that I can see very clearly if there's an anacrusis. Now if you're looking at me like, Anna what? The dictionary meaning for what an anacrusis is is an unstressed pick up or lead in note that precedes the first accented note of a phrase. Now, in layman's terms, that means something that you sing just before beat one. Now, in this case, in the chorus of Steal My Kisses, the word always is on beat one. Always have to steal my kisses from you. But what he sings just before beat one is and a. And I always have to steal my kisses from you. So what I like to do sometimes is just chuck in a bracket. Now, somebody else might see that and think, hang on, 
are they just backing vocals? Because brackets usually mean that it's the backing vocal part, like an echo or just a separate part that what another vocalist would sing. But that's just what I do to give myself like a little bit of a visual cue that you've got to sing that just before beat one. Because otherwise it'll be, and I always have to steal my kisses from you. It doesn't sound right. And I always have to steal my kisses from you. Something else that you could do to clear it up so it's definitely not a backing vocal is maybe put it in italics and or a little dash. Now this last little tip is to help the non-singers or the singers that can play an instrument. I like to just chuck some chords in. If there's heaps and heaps and heaps of different chords, well then it can get really messy and it can make it not easy to read what the lyrics are. But if the chords are pretty simple, maybe up the top or sometimes at the bottom, I'll just chuck the chords in. So for this song, it's just G, C, D, and G. G, C, D, G. Always have to steal my kisses from you. Always have to steal my kisses from you. Woo! All right, to summarize, let's have a look at all these things put together. Now, I've just copy and pasted straight out of Google. This is what it looks like. There's no song title. That looks like pure torture. You know, if I was on stage having to try and read that clearly as well as perform and here we've got something really clear if you have heaps of sheets of paper and you're like ah where's still my kisses it'll be heaps easy to find and you'll be able to see where all of the sections are and also know when to start on beat one give me that one every time we say goodbye i die a little Okay, so there you have it. There was a bunch of lyric formatting tips for you. Was it helpful? Let me know in the comments below what was the most helpful. What have you learnt from this? Let me know. And if you like this video, I have a bunch of other music tips videos on this channel that you can check out. And you can also follow Crafty Music Tips on a bunch of other socials platforms. And if that's not enough for you, just before we go here, I've got a free gift to offer you. It's called Five Steps to Fast Improvement. Now, we all have those points in our life where we're like, ah, oh, I'm just not getting good enough or I'm not improving fast enough or I'm just feeling like I'm chasing my own tail. Now what I give you in this ebook is five steps to being able to be really clear about what it is that you need to make sure that you can improve at the rate that you want to on whatever skill it is. So I hope that sounds helpful for you. The link is below. All right, so there you have it. Yet another music tips video down. I'll see you in another one really soon. Take care of yourself. Keep rocking.